Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'm going to be painting a quick and simple sunset. A lot of you guys seem to like sunset painting, so here's another one for you guys. Like usual, I'm going to start by masking my paper on the sides, and after this I'm just going to draw out a simple sketch to show the horizon line as well as some of the rock formation. This will mostly be covered by paint, but I personally like to place them there so I can imagine the placement before painting it. After I'm done with the rough sketch, I'm going to start painting, so here are the colors I'll be using. Firstly, this is Hansi Yellow Medium by Daniel Smith, Hansi Yellow Light by Daniel Smith, Quinn Red by Daniel Smith, Indigo by Schmincke, Ultramarine Deep by Holbein, Lamp Black by Daniel Smith, and for the final touch-up, I'm going to use Bleed Proof White by Dr. Paige Martins, or you can also use White Gouache or White Pen. So before I start to paint, I just want to wet the area of the sky using my large flat brush here. I want the water to be distributed quite lightly and to just make that area a little bit damp without the water puddling too much. The first color that I'm going to take is Hansa Yellow Light and I'm going to use a medium to thick consistency to just create a large circle to represent the sun. I'm making this larger than what I intend the sun to be because we are painting on a wet surface so the circle that I'm painting will spread both towards the outside and also the middle. At the top and sides, I spread a bit of the Hansa Yellow Light to show the light illuminating from the sun. Then I'm going to follow this up with just the Hansa Yellow Medium to enrich the color. At any point, if the paint is spreading towards the inside of the sun, I like to stop the flow by taking off the excess using rolled up tissue. While I try to define the shape of the sun, the edges might turn out a bit too sharp, so to soften the edge if the paper is a bit too dry, I try to use a clean damp brush to soften it, and in turn, it will also make the sun smaller, which is why it's safer to draw the initial sun slightly larger than intended. Here with the yellow, I'm just going to map out the area of the clouds. You don't have to make this, but I just felt like incorporating one, so I just softened the outline. Then I'm going to follow this up by using a purple mix and an orange mix to paint the sky around the clouds. For the purple, I use a mixture of Quinn Red and Ultramarine Deep. And as for the orange, I used a mixture of Hansa Yellow with Quinn Red. Now I just want to color the rest of the sky using the same orange mixture. I want the surrounding area to be slightly more red and darker when it's further away from the sun and more yellow when it's closer to the sun. So near the sun, I tend to use more of the Hansa yellow light, whilst next to that as we build up to the darker sides, I'm going to mix Hansa yellow with a little bit of Quinn red and the more further away, the more Quinn Red I'm going to use in the mixture. Here, as you can see, the edges around the sun looks a bit messy, but with watercolors, you can always clean this up using a clean damp brush, which is what I'm doing here to create a softer edge. After I've painted the sky with the orange mixture, the sky should be wet, so this is where I'm going to layer on more of the darker orange, which is the same mixture but with more Quinn Red in the ratio. And as you can see, I'm trying to create lines just to give the sky a little bit of texture. Towards the edges and also the bottom area, I like to add a little bit of that purple mix just to give it a bit more interest with the color. And I'm just using a thin consistency here so the colors won't be too murky. As you can see, even when I'm painting distinct lines, because the surface of the paper is still a bit damp, it's just going to naturally soften so the sky looks nice and blended. 
Here I'm just going to build up on the color. I'm using the same purple mixture, but this time I added more quin red in the ratio. As you can see, by just playing around with the ratio, you can create more interest with the colors. Now onto the cloud, as you can see I'm using the same purple, but this time I added more ultramarine deep in the ratio. So this is just mostly blue with a touch of quin red. For the bottom of the cloud, I used a bit more quin red in the mixture. So there's a gradation between the blue purple to the red purple. Here I also felt like I needed to add more clouds, but as you can see, because I didn't leave that area with the white off the paper, the color won't look the same as the main large cloud. This is why I left a white negative space there so I could paint it with a cleaner blue and purple with more vibrant colors. I don't mind the smaller clouds, which are not as vibrant though, because they're not usually the same color anyway and this will look like it's just placed further away from the main clouds as the color blends more with the color of the sky. Here I tried painting land which are further away by using quin red and ultramarine deep but because the surface of the paper is still a bit damp it blended too much with the sky color so I decided to just dry it off first before going over it again so meanwhile I'm just going to work on the water surface. Just like the sky, I started out by wetting the surface of the paper to make it evenly damp. And the first thing I did is to map out the reflection of the sun just like we did with the sky. Because with watercolors, it's very important to notice where the lightest area of your painting will be and be aware to not cover those areas with darker colors. I started out with Hans Yellow Light just like what I did with the sun and the sky. And as I build on the colors, I start using orange mixtures with different ratios. But I want the water surface to be slightly darker. So as I move towards the left of the page, I use more red purple in comparison to how I painted the sky. As you've probably noticed, the only rock or land formation that I'm leaving is the one closest to the sun and that's because that's where the lightest color of the rock will be as the sun rays hit those areas but as for the rest of the rock formation I don't mind painting over them as they're going to mostly be painted with darker tones as silhouettes. If you want the surface of the water to look more still, then I would suggest to not create too much texture on the water surface where the sun reflection is. And you can also stop here with the colors for the water. But because I want the water to be a bit more textured with small movements, I decided to build up the color more with ultramarine deep, especially on the left side of the page as it's further away from the sun. After that, I'm also going to layer on more ultramarine deep to parts of the clouds so it doesn't look too flat. And I'm also going to build up the vibrancy of the sky slightly by using the same colors as what I used for the base color but in a medium consistency to slightly glaze over the top. This is where I decided to layer on a thick consistency of the dark purple mix again to paint the land which is far away in the distance and because I painted a bit of the sky earlier a bit of the color might bleed out but it's okay because I don't want it to be completely sharp anyway as long as you can see that it's not a flat horizon in that area. So here I'm done painting the base color for all the areas and I just want to make sure that the paper is completely dry before I layer on further details where I want the edges to be sharper. Now that the paper is completely dry again, I'm going to build on the darker colors by using indigo on the left side of the page and as I move closer to the light area, I slowly add more quin red in the mix. The way I'm applying the paint is the exact same way as how I've applied it since the beginning for the sky and that's to just paint horizontal lines to create the texture of the water and because the paper is now dry, I'm going to create crisp edges instead of the soft edge when I'm painting on a damp surface.
from the red purple then I move to a reddish orange until I continue the color to the yellows. Then after this I'm going to dry the surface again because I want this to be completely dry in order to paint the rocks. I'm going to paint the most obvious one here first as an example for the rocks. Where the light hits the top part of the rock formation, I use a mixture of ultramarine deep with quin red. Then I'm following that up with indigo as I paint the sides of the rock and this will create a glowing effect. I'm also going to follow this up by painting smaller rocks along the sides. I'm going to do the same for the next few rock formation. I'm going to use the red purple for the middle area where the light rays are hitting the top surface then paint the indigo for the sides. Basically what I'm trying to do here is use the red purple for areas of the rocks which are closest to the light reflection on the water and as the sides to darken it I use indigo. But because the color of the water is already dark on the left hand side I use lamp black instead of indigo so it's still visible on top of the dark blue water. While I wait for that part to dry, I'm also going to increase the saturation a bit more on the sky by using the same colors, just so there's more contrast to form the bright light from the sun in comparison to the water. This, of course, will just depend on the state of your painting, but because I painted the water fairly dark, I don't want the sky to look too different. While I wait for the sky to dry, I'm going to add a bit of vegetation on the rock using my liner brush. You can also use any small brush that you have for this though. The way I'm going to do this is by flicking from the bottom up because I want to make sure that the thicker part of the stroke is the bottom while the top of the vegetation is much thinner. Once I'm done, I'm going to paint a tree on the left hand side, but I do want the sky to be mostly dry for this if the sky is still a bit damp. I would just use a hairdryer to quickly dry it off because I don't want the details of the tree to spread all over the sky. The main color that I use for this is a mixture of indigo with quin red, but as I get more towards the left side or the darker part of the tree, I use more lamp black. So just like the rock formations, I'll add darker colors towards the left and slightly brighter colors closer to the sun which means more quin red in the ratio. I started out by painting the branches with my liner brush because I find that I'm able to get more delicate lines with this brush, but you can also use any small brush that you have. At this point, I didn't really have any shape in mind for the tree as well as the leaf placement, so I just kept adding leaves using different brushes in order to create different textures. I like to vary the color of the leaves as well. This way, the lightest colored leaves look like they're further away, whilst the darker ones look like they're closer, and this would just make the silhouette look less flat. I decided to also add more vegetation on the bottom left side and you can just basically paint any different types of plants that you have in mind as well. I still wasn't 100% happy with how the tree look but at the same time I also decided to just dry off the painting and take off the masking tape and just fix the side using my bleed proof white. 
If you're at this stage of the painting and you still want to follow through with the tutorial, I would suggest for you to leave the masking tape on. But I always tend to do this because the painting also looks different once the edges are clean. But yeah, I decided that I wanted to play with the density of the tree a little bit more. So I made a few areas a bit more dense by using the same coloring system. Just like before, I like to use more Quin Red in the mix when I'm painting the leaves closer to the sun. So here as you can see, the color gives warmth to the tree as if the light is illuminating through the leaves. I also felt like the tree looks a bit more natural once I played with the density of the leaves. And I'm just going to continue to do this and add more until I feel like there's a nice coverage. You can technically call this done now, but I like to adjust a few things with the light. I don't like how the water is very dark behind the tree branches because it made the tree bark look a bit too bulky. So I tried to break up the dark color by using a thin consistency of bleed proof white to lighten that area of water behind the tree to separate the shape. So I feel like there's a breathable area there. Then I decided to follow this up by using a thick consistency of bleed proof white to paint more reflection on the water and to accentuate the brightest areas. This is also very useful in case you've covered up all that area and forget to leave out any white space so you can always go back with a bleed proof white. Then to finish off the painting, I decided to add splatters of white initially on the sky even though the stars are not out yet, but heck it's a painting, it's my painting, I can do whatever. And I decided to also add some on the water surface. Of course, with splatters being uncontrollable, I would get splatters on the rocks and trees as well. So for those areas, I tried to cover or erase the white with lamp black, indigo or any other color mixtures that I used for the base color if I accidentally get any white on areas I don't want to land on. So yeah, that's it. This is the finished painting. Like usual, all the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in the description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!